It's never been harder to get a job as a developer than right now. After personally helping hundreds of developers get their first jobs, I have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't. So here are five ways to improve your chances and go from undesirable to hireable. The last one might be a little controversial, but it can make a big difference. All right, let's start off with one of my favorites that I think applies to anything that you're doing, and that is to do your research. We'll talk about portfolios in a minute. We'll talk about how to prepare, et cetera. But what you have to do before that is do your research. So how do you know what types of jobs are available, which skill sets are hot, which things are going to make you most employable? That's by doing your research. So go out to LinkedIn, go out to Glassdoor, go look at job applications in your area if you're looking for non-remote positions or remote positions that are across the country or the world, wherever it is, and find out what are the skill sets that they're looking for that you have or you don't have, and then go and build those skill sets to go and be the most desirable candidate for the jobs that are open. I personally do a ton of JavaScript, but if I were looking for a job right now, I would need to expand my skill set probably to get into Java or .NET or something else that makes me more well-rounded and able to apply and be considered for more jobs. Now, the other thing that your research does, it gives you an idea of not only what types of jobs are out there, what types of skill sets exist, but also what types of salary ranges you might be able to, to expect. Even before that, though, is what to expect in your interview. So let's say you send in an application, you get an interview, you need to be asking, what can I expect inside of this interview so that you can be prepared? Now, after you've done your research, that will help you then do this next step, which is crucial, and that is to narrow your focus. A lot of us feel like we have infinite things to learn and we spend a lot of time bouncing around from YouTube video to Udemy course, et cetera, but you really need to use that research and narrow your focus and use your time most efficiently. We only have so much time in a day to prepare for interviews, to learn new skill sets. So prioritizing which things are most important and which things you can ignore are super, super important. Now, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I talk about the latest releases in Next.js. I talk about the latest features in Next.js and other frameworks and things. And I pay attention to what people are talking about in the ecosystem. But if I were looking for a job, those are not the most important things right now. A lot of that is fluff that I could ignore. So by doing my research, I know what skill sets I specifically am going to work on. I know which skill sets of mine that already exist to be able to talk about in my interviews and to put on my resume. But most importantly, I know where and how to prioritize my time in preparation for that next role. Now, after you've done your research, after you've kind of narrowed your focus, you can start to pay a little bit more attention to your portfolio. So let's say while you're looking for job, you see that the language of Java is something that pops up in a ton of different opportunities, meaning that's something you need to add to your portfolio. So if you don't have previous work experience with Java that you can have on your resume already, this is your opportunity to go and build a project, something tangible, something that you can show and talk about in interviews that exemplifies your skill set or your experience with Java. Or at the very least, even if you don't have deep level of experience with that, you can at least show that you were able to learn enough to be able to build something, which at the end of the day is what we as developers are meant to and expected to do is to solve problems and build stuff. So if you can build something tangible, something that exemplifies a skill set that you're looking to get across in a project or two projects and have that confidently on your resume and be able to talk about that in interviews, that's the key to have companies and interviewers consider you for the positions that they're hiring for. Now, this next one is going to sound a little cliche, and it's something that you've almost certainly heard before, but it has never been more true than right now, and that is to network. Now, networking, I actually hate that word. I think it's really cold and sterile, and I see people do this wrong all the time. They go up to somebody and they say, hi, I'm James. I do blah, 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 and they're really trying to figure out what can they do for me, or you're trying to figure out what can they do for you, but that's not networking. Networking is just genuinely being a part of your community. It's showing up in the community. And what does community look like? Well, I get community in a lot of different places. I get community on Twitter. I get community in my Learn, Build, Teach Discord community, which you can check out at learnbuildteach.com. I do in-person meetups. I go to conferences. Conferences are an amazing opportunity to see a bunch of booths with companies that are hiring meet a bunch of people, meet speakers, et cetera, and use that network, use those relationships when you need them. Now, the thing that people do wrong with this is they think, hey, if I get laid off or if I'm struggling to find a job, now is my time to network. But the reality is you can't start networking when you need it. You build your network beforehand for when you inevitably need it. 
Now, I've actually been through this myself. I was let go from my job a year and a half ago. And when I posted on Twitter asking if people were hiring for specific types of roles, I got tons of messages in my DMs with people reaching out to ask if I would be interested in working for their company. A lot of those seemed like they were bypassing some of the initial interview process and willing to move me along because I had already shown my knowledge, my capability, my teaching style, et cetera, through the content that I've created and through the network that I've created for myself. So networking is not just going up and introducing yourself to someone that you think can do something for you. It's just showing up in your communities, whatever they are, whether they're online or in person, you showing up consistently in your communities and engaging and providing value in your communities is what helps you build a strong network so that when you need that network, you already have it ready to go and ready to leverage. Now, this last one is the one that is kind of controversial, and you'll hear people say specifically not to do this in your career, but I am an advocate of it can make sense when and if it makes sense, and that is to do free work to get experience. Now, the reason people say not to do this is they don't want companies to take advantage of you as an aspiring developer and get free work out of you just because they're not willing to pay. Now, I definitely don't want that to happen. I don't want people to be taken advantage of, but here's the flip side. There are opportunities for me in my career where I would absolutely do things for free, but I have to make sure that those opportunities provide me the value that equal what I would be giving up in being paid. So what does that look like? I could potentially approach an open source project that I use and say, hey, I would like to contribute to this open source project to gain experience and learn more and get real world hands on experience working with a team. Not only can you do that with open source projects, you can also leverage this network that you're building to offer that to companies as well. Now, again, I think time is one of the most valuable resources that we have, and I am very protective of my time personally. But I think there is value in being able to get that real world experience and sit next to a real world developer who you can learn from and be able to contribute and work with. It's not the kind of thing I would say do all the time, but if you're in a pinch and you're struggling to get that job, I think that level of experience could pay off wonderfully for you. So those are my five different tips for searching for jobs in this economy, which unfortunately is really, really tough. If you feel like there are any tips that you think I missed, make sure to add those in the comments below because I think those would be useful for everyone watching here so they can continue to get more feedback and ideas on what they can do to improve their chances. Best of luck in your job search. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.